back to you. Uh, the Lindsay structure is good, but having something to look forward to is good. We just planned a trip in May, months from mm. now, but it is still something to look forward to. Yes, I love that solution. Yeah. It's like not an immediate like answer to the issue, but it's also something to give your brain, yeah, like a little bit of normalcy to kind of get back on track. Right. Mm-hmm. Love that. And where did I go to high school? I went to high school in uh, Northfield, Massachusetts. Mm. So Northfield, Mount Hermon. Is, uh, was the name of the school. There you go. All right. Um, it is the time of year to make New Year's resolutions. I have mine. Well. I'm going to lose weight. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it may take a two-year resolution oh, okay. at this okay. point. But, uh, but no, that's a, one that, you know, exercise, mm-hmm. weight. Oh, I mean, yeah. standard. Mm-hmm. Um, but we do lots of them. Mm-hmm. What should we do? What shouldn't we do? And when are we setting ourselves up to fail so that yeah. it, it just makes matters worse? How can Absolutely. we avoid that? Well, I think the whole resolution thing, over the I would say over the course of my lifetime, I have definitely seen a shift in the way that we approach it. But I do still think it can be a very like nerve-wracking conversation because here's the thing about resolutions. You make a statement on what, December 31st, January 1st, whatever, mm-hmm. and you're like, this is going to be me for the whole year. Right. But then what happens if you get sick or you don't feel your best one day or maybe if it's a I'm going to get healthy and go to the gym every day and then you miss a day, what do you do now? Lay on the couch the rest of the year. Right, right. And that's so frequently what happens. And so I forget what the exact like statistic was, but I want to say it was something like by the first weekend in January, most resolutions have either been like discarded or kind of thrown, you know, like, ah, well, you know, we'll just figure it out. So what I which really... Which would be fine, and again, which yeah. would be fine if we really didn't make them earnestly at Correct. the beginning. I mean, if we were just saying something, I'm going to be president of the United States, okay. All right, right, up. right. Yeah, right. that's kind of silly, really right? Yeah. kind of these resolutions that we want. There's something about us or Absolutely. our surroundings that we'd like to change. So it's been probably about six or seven years ago since I really started doing this for myself that instead of having a resolution, I started coming up with a theme or a word or like a phrase or a quote or something to guide my year that feels more like a kind of overarching like net of sorts, like a safety net around things, but it doesn't feel quite as exacting and like icky where if maybe like one year, for example, it was, I really want to get better at practicing the self-care that I teach my clients to use. And so that year I went on kind of a journey of, Hey, I'm going to try to journal or I'm going to do this self-care thing or that self-care thing. And you were talking about like posting online and I would kind of post my progress. Well, mm-hmm. after that year, I really saw how much more effective it was. I didn't feel as at odds with myself. I didn't feel like I was, you know, behind the curve somehow if I missed a day here or there. And then at the end of the year, I actually felt more accomplished because I was like, yeah, I have done a lot to try and improve my self-care throughout the year, but I didn't hold myself to an all or nothing standard. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I've seen um, in my my other vocation we have Lent, mm-hmm. yes. And uh, but every you know people know about Lent, and it, it typically when I first started celebrating Lent, if you celebrate it, mm-hmm. but participating in Lent, it was right. always I know something. I'm going yep. to give up something. I'm going to stop doing something. And then um, you know whether it's chocolate, this alcohol, mm-hmm. whatever it was, mm-hmm. and 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 again, typically people didn't make it. Right. And then it turned around and said, rather than a no, it was more of a yes. I'm going to do I've something more too. positive. Mm-hmm. So I'm not giving up something. I'm going to try to do something. Mm-hmm. I'm going to spend less time uh, bitching and complaining. Sure. I'm going to spend less time. Uh, you know, I'm not. And instead of giving up something, mm-hmm. you try to start something. What about that as, you know, that approach to New Year's resolutions? I really like that approach because our brains are already really hardwired for the negative. We're very good at finding the problems in situations or focusing on the things that we aren't doing. So if we're already starting with that idea that we're going to like take something away, you know, we are already kind of using that negative mindset Mm -hmm. a little bit. So then if you do something more of like, I'm going to add more of this or that to my day. One that I've seen a lot of people do is they say, you know, I want to read more. Mm -hmm. And so maybe they make a list of books. Books they'd like to read through the year. Maybe they get in a book club or something mm-hmm. like that, where again, you're not penalizing yourself and judging yourself should you fall short on a day. But you're also trying to enrich your life. You're trying to give yourself something that's going to make you feel better. It's like if you could reframe the resolution from the, oh, I've got to do it, to the, you know, what would I like that would improve my life? Are there things that that I'd like to incorporate that could just make me feel overall better? Mm -hmm. In uh, 30 seconds or less, for Uh those folks that, uh, like me, are going to make the resolution that I'm going to do something (laughs) and I'm going to fail, Mm -hmm. how can we kind of get over that I failed and Mm -hmm. get into the, yeah, but I can, you know, 
it doesn't have to be the end. We can mm-hmm. keep moving forward. We can turn a negative into a positive. Absolutely. I like to remind people that even if you have to hit the pause button and begin again, you're never going all the way back to the beginning. So rather than telling yourself, oh, I failed, I have to start over, just go, okay, I didn't quite hit the mark where I wanted. I'm going to hit the reset button and keep going forward. And that's really the way you want to look at it. You're not ever going all the way back to the beginning. It's okay to not like if there's been backsliding, but you don't have to sit there and beat yourself up. Let yourself actually have some compassion that you might give to other people. Give it to yourself. Yeah. You can make resolutions on the 2nd, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th of Every January. Every day of the year. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, Lindsay Walden, thank you so much for joining us. Give us, uh, where can people find you? Absolutely. LindsayWalden.com is probably the easiest. You can always call or text my office, 314-485-9189. Very good. Thank you. It's a pleasure seeing you again. Thanks for having me. Um, We are coming back after the news, the weather, and some commercials with Greg Willard. We're going to talk about George Santos. Should he be a congressman or not? And then Rafael Esparza is going to show me how to make a million dollars on the bowl games this year. It's KTRS, the Big 550. Jake Hansler in for McGraw-Millhaven. Back after these words.